If you're here for a glossy bouldering highlight video, then you're in the wrong place. Three weeks in Tokyo ultimately gave me what I came for, but it was a complete battle that I was losing for most of the trip. I was heading straight for the front line for the climbing equivalent of a near-death experience. After dealing with the logistics and jet lag, my first few sessions were in beat pump and I couldn't have been more gutted. Tokyo is renowned for hard bouldering and an insane level of climbers. B Pump Okikubo is in particular probably one of the hardest gyms in the world. In B Pump you've got the black tapes which are the hardest which are 3D, you've got light green tapes which are the second hardest which are 2D and then after that you've got brown tapes which are 1D and then after that I think it goes orange and then light blue. I'd say that the hardest boulder in the UK would probably amount to around a brown tape in B Pump which it's pretty insane if you think about it and it's not surprising when you think of little stats like that why the Japanese team is so strong. To start there was a pretty simple light blue tape boulder that required jumping up to two large footholds and a thumb catch. I floated up it pretty much like a, you can imagine an elephant would float up um, a slab. Yeah it wasn't pretty. You could tell from the noise alone that I was climbing it like a d I moved on to a pink dish problem. This was a white tape, which is very far down the grading scale. I was using the wrong beta and couldn't find many of the positions required. When I finally climbed it, I was trying incredibly hard. I was pulling to my maximum and I was just a bit gobsmacked really. Like this is a, this is a white tag boulder and it's taken me multiple attempts and I feel like I've had to thug my way up it when in reality, I look back half an hour later and there's this Japanese local just floating up it like it's V2, um, which, which is uh, just quite hard. <laughs> Every climb I tried, I felt like I was fighting. The trip did not start like I was hoping for, which is pretty frustrating. I found myself a red brown tape. This was a slab, pretty dynamic finish. It was a really, really good boulder. I flashed the first few moves, which was a bit of a confidence boost because at this point, I was happily trying to hang on to anything to find a bit of confidence. I set up for the final move after feeling pretty good on it and yeah, I dropped. <laughs> and I got shut down repeatedly and repeatedly. The more I tried, the further away it seemed. It's a move ideally I wanted to flash because it's the sort of thing you want to get there confident and then go for it and then get it. Um, but over and over again, I just fell off and fell off and fell off. The rewards for a winter spent putting in the hours felt like repeatedly being punched in the face. So much hard work and I was just getting shut down. I escaped to an orange tape red slab boulder on the comp wall. In theory, this was a great easier according to the mental grades that were going on. It was safe to say this boulder added a new layer of frustration to an already frustrating situation. The boulder revolved around a blocks volume where one of the faces had become so black with shoe rubber that I was contemplating some sort of complaint or petition to anyone in authority who could speak English. There were already abysmal levels of friction on offer, but the volume was taking the there were several different methods to the boulder which involved going with a leading foot, a lean over with both hands or a more dynamic move across. I couldn't make any of them work. What the hell was going on? This is just misery. I can't do anything. I watched someone flash this slab earlier. It looked like it was like about V2 and I'm sat here having the worst time of my life in one of the coolest places in the world. About an hour of misery later, I headed for the Rocklands Wall in B Pump, the steepest part of the gym and the furthest terrain away from a slab. I was then pretty relieved to flash a brown tape black boulder, which was very much in my style. Couldn't really be more in my style, to be honest. So it's nice to, nice to get a bit of confidence. Sensing a change of fortune, I almost immediately moved on to the light green tape red boulder on the same wall. This was a mistake. It was hard. I got shut down again and again and again. There was a yellow black tape boulder on the same on the same piece of wall. That wasn't even in sight at this point. If I couldn't even get up a light green tape, how was I ever going to do a black tape? As some sort of side quest, I started regularly repeating the blue dino to try and be slightly less elephant-like. And it was slowly becoming more refined. Slowly. Very, very slowly. I returned to the initial red slab, the brown tape, and even though I didn't feel like it was a problem, I removed the tape from my right middle finger and immediately stuck the last sequence with a 
relative ease really. Friction in climbing is obviously very important overall, but in B pump it's especially true. It's in a league of its own really. I wasn't necessarily cutting myself any slack, which wasn't really helping my mindset whilst trying these boulders. But yeah, it was, uh, it was hard. The next day, and I returned to the comp pool, seeking revenge for that red slab and proceeded to work it for the next hour and a half, during which a few locals climbed it very nicely in front of me, happily giving me some beta, demonstrating the problem actually wasn't that hard and it was mainly just me. They were really nice guys and I really enjoyed trying it with them. One of them told me I should try youth comps and based on how I was climbing, it was solid advice. And uh, yeah, I was <laughs> ready, to, ready to join the YCS again. With some local encouragement, I managed to unpick the beta. The beta is very, very technical. So you have to stand on the right foot as much and as much as possible, stand up, and then at the very last moment, and before it slips, you have to do a very quick foot swap, land your left foot on the, on the blocks volume with uh, absolutely no friction on it, and then um, pray that your right foot hits the right, uh, the right hand blocks volume, and then get like a guppy on the, on the right hand. Yeah, if all of that goes to, um, if all of that happens, then you'll find you've done the move, but uh, that took a very, very long time. After hours of trying that nice. move, I eventually did it and found myself on the top of the boulder with relative ease. Luckily, the, um, the top wasn't so bad, um, and I jumped down immediately and repeated the boulder with the other beta. Spending almost three hours across two days on a boulder that should be well within my capability is humbling but exactly what I came to Tokyo for. I made my way back to the relative safety of the steep Rocklands wall and an orange tape. However, the last moves felt absolutely savage and this was just, this was painful. And after a mini high of topping that slab, I was straight back to reality. At this point, I was mostly thinking, what the hell is going on? I definitely don't want to compare myself to others too much. I've got my own plan, I've got my own objectives. I know what my plan is. I'm confident in the process. I'm in a competition with myself to be better than my previous self. However, being in the best gym in the world, surrounded by World Cup winners, Olympians, and struggling is a different kind of test, which, yeah, it was hard. Multiple days of repeatedly falling off everything hadn't been great on my skin, and it was getting worse. You find that when you flash stuff, your skin's generally pretty good, but when you're falling off everything, your skin tends to get pretty bad. I took two rest days and disappeared into Tokyo. My sixth day in Tokyo was my first lead day at pump two. After two days rest, skin was starting to improve, but tape was still a necessity. I was looking forward to getting on a rope, maybe even a safe place and an easy win for me at this point, because I do love lead climbing. I put work into my lead over the winter and I'd already had a trip to Innsbruck at the end of January. So to get pretty much shut down on a black A tier plus felt alien to what is normally a warm up grade for me. The exact same thing happened on the 8B, maybe even a bit worse. It was a few days before the Japan League Cup and Pump 2 was packed with world-class climbers ready to compete in very good shape. It was uh, pretty cool to see everyone there training before the Japan Cup. I knew the routes were graded wrong and absolutely sandbagged to but I was questioning a lot at this point. The consensus was the routes were probably at least 8C slash 8C plus and were probably the most friction-dependent sandbag sequency grades I've ever come across and literally had me questioning reality. The trip was starting to feel like a one-sided boxing match and side bets on the Japan League Cup with the wasabi forfeits wasn't helping. <laughs> If you don't question things, then you've probably become too stagnant. If you don't trust your plan, then you're compromising your longer term goals. When you're showing up and trying hard, it's not always easy to reconcile things, especially when you're feeling so bad. You want results sometimes, and you want to get those hints that you're in good shape and it's going to be okay. You need to get some validation that the training is actually working. The plan for Tokyo was always to have highly focused sessions that weren't anywhere near the volume of my winter training. I knew I was carrying training load from the hard winter months. We returned to B-Pump with slowly improving skin and after warming up, I was happy to flash an orange tape pink boulder. I returned to the Rocklands wall to try the orange tape project that I had, which is uh, quite funny because this is nowhere near the hardest grade in there. Um, and after a few goes, I was matching the finish, which I was pretty happy with.
Things were slowly starting to improve and I moved on to the light green tape red boulder that I'd been shut down on a few days before. This boulder was uh, very sequency and very hard. Micro beta started to have a big effect, combined with improving skin and moves starting to come together whilst ma maintaining the focus of each session. I kept jumping away on the blue, trying to be less elephant-like. I managed to find some tops of the easier comp wall boulders, which I've been saving, which was a nice little confidence boost. At the opposite end of the comp wall to the red slab nightmare was a light green tape boulder on green blocks volumes which I'd yet to try. The crux was a jump onto a small left foot that required a lot of accuracy and um, a very specific body position with a left hand catch followed by a stand up move. It was also pretty skin friendly which um, at this point of the trip I was very happy with. I was pretty happy with my progress on this boulder and found a relatively quick top, which I was pretty psyched with because it's quite a hard slab. The jump across move felt good and I put a lot of balance and strength work into my legs over the winter. Eliminating the left hand catch, it felt possible, hard but possible and I was pretty psyched to try it. It was definitely a challenge but I was happy to stick it and equally happy to, uh, to then be able to stand up without the crimp which was quite a big pistol squat on the left leg. Um, yeah, so having put a lot of work into my, into my legs over the winter and making sure my legs were strong, I was pretty happy to be able to, to stand up like that with relative ease. Over a week in, and this was my first good day at V-Pump. After a rest day, we headed to a gym called Underground, which was unsurprisingly underground. What it lacks in size makes up for in quality. The boulders were incredible in there. We stuck to the plan of short focus sessions. I climbed in there for two hours, followed by a short break, and then another two hours. The focus was execution, and execution only. I worked my way through the grades with some incredibly well set climbs, forcing good movement, and good route reading for such a small space some of the climbs were ex exceptional and when i say this place was small it was it was very very small i can't imagine more than that really
I worked my way up to the second hardest grade, which was white tape in this gym, slightly different to V-Pump, and was really psyched to top a very, very physical um, green climb. It was very much in my style and a really hard boulder, but yeah, I was just so happy to, to be starting to feel in physically good shape. The next day, we went to Base Camp Kinshoko. I think it's also called Base Camp Tokyo. There's a lot of base camps. It had a very different feel, but again, it had some very good setting, which forced really good movement. The hardest physical boulder was a purple that revolved around a cluster of holds that were difficult to move past. Yeah, very strange, but a very good boulder. Two excellent days spent exploring some new gyms and some excellent setting and it felt like the trip was starting to finally come together. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm so <laughs> good. And on to another day. It was a privilege to be able to go to Tomoe's and Akio's private gym. To be honest, in my opinion, it's probably the second best lead ball in the world behind Innsbruck. And the fact that that's just Tomoe and Akio's um, private climbing gym, it's just insane. And yeah, really cool to see. An insane facility to have a home and it was incredible to climb there. So thank, thank you for, for letting me climb. After a few days away from bee pump and improving skin, I was psyched to try some harder uh, to some harder climbs and headed for the infamous black tape boulder on the Rocklands wall. I was so, so psyched to get on this after starting to finally feel a bit better. Black tapes are a grade of their own. There are black tape boulders that have taken the strongest climbers months to do single moves. I think Yoshiyuki, a really strong Japanese climber, has been projecting this red black tape on the, the font wall in, in B-Pump for, for months now and it's just so cool to see him go in there and then just stick everything into this boulder. Projecting is just, it's just so great and to have that indoors is, is really cool. It's safe to say the yellow was on the easy side for a black tape and probably very close to a green, uh, to a green tape but I was psyched out of my mind to send it on my fifth go after such a challenging um, start to the trip. I never would have thought after those first couple of days of that trip that I'd be able to send a black tape on my fifth go. So. Yeah, it's nice to have that change. Imagine if I just flashed it, surely that would have been the first black tape flash. I definitely didn't have the right body position for that top. Definitely feels within me, I just gotta link it up. I mean, that goes pretty close, and that's my first red point. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely on.
When I hit that, I just felt like so good. Yeah, there's never any doubt. Due to skin issues, I'd left the very heavily friction dependent light green sole problem on the comp pool with the idea of trying it a bit later. It looked like a really, really good boulder and I was waiting for my skin to get better. I was happy with the end of session progress after I finally got around to trying it. All right, boys, we're ready. <laughs> Dinner is served. It's a bit, a bit of a lost cause. I managed to stick the really hard top move and top the boulder early on the following day. and went back to the light green red tape boulder on the Rockman's wall. After a few goes to stick the starting dyno, I was able to piece it all together. That's two light green tapes and I was very, very happy. The Sowell boulder is probably one of the best boulders I've done in a very long time. The red light green tape on the Rockman's wall was just another incredible boulder, so well set. You had to get the perfect body position, your feet are following your hands and yeah, after it feeling almost impossible on the first on the first couple goes to get that done, felt amazing. A few guys working some dynamic moves and it was back to pump two following a rest day for some more lead work and I was pretty psyched to do some more lead with good skin. With improved skin and execution I topped the ridiculously created black 80 plus on my first go, first go of the session, uh, definitely not first go, I'd say it's 8C in my opinion and the green 8B on second go, uh, probably around 8C, um, maybe a bit of a harder 8C. I'm not sure I'll ever be asking a Japanese climber about grades, it's just insane. The fact that 8A plus is probably 8C anywhere in Europe is just mental. The final two days of the trip came around and the comp had been reset and B pump was absolutely packed with incredible climbers. Energy.
There were various slabs and power bottles and all of a sudden light green tapes were feeling more possible than ever, ever before. All the way up until I tried the most dynamic boulder I'd ever tried. The complexity of this boulder was just insane. There were so many intricacies but so much depends on stopping momentum at certain points, swinging at this point, stopping at this point, just so many different things going on. Body position and gen generating power again, like it all came into this very complex set of movement that once you nail it, then it doesn't feel so bad. I finished the session pretty frustrated. Um, I didn't unlock the move at all. And yeah, I just spent so, so many goes in this boulder and I just wasn't getting anywhere on it. I wasn't seeing any, anywhere near the amount of progress that I would have liked to. The last day of a three week trip was about a little more mileage prior to some rest days traveling home. Although not without trying that black boulder one last time. Unlocking the movement in around 15 minutes to top what is probably the most anti-style boulder for me felt like a reward for three weeks of hard work. Just doing this just made me feel so good and made the whole trip worth it. After a winter with lots of physical work and building a large base, I was initially struggling to, with slowly remembering the subtleties of climbing. Root reading, movement, timing, body position, weighting feet, friction, efficiency, execution, all of these things go into what makes a good climber, as well as focusing on what I can control whilst enjoying the process at the same time. It was exactly why I came to Tokyo.